12 Thoughts on Ukraine Putin has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the goal of which he claims is not to occupy the country, but to, quote, demilitarize and denazify it. We have no reason to put blind faith in any of those claims. Only time will tell. As of this writing, dozens of people have reportedly been killed so far. All war is horrific. We can only hope that this one winds up being the least horrific a war can be. Some thoughts. 1. This whole thing could have very easily been avoided with a little bit of diplomacy. The only reason that didn't happen was it would have meant the U.S. empire taking a teensy-weensy step back from its agenda of total planetary domination. I've seen people call it sad or unfortunate that Western powers didn't make basic low-cost, high-yield concessions like guaranteeing no NATO membership for Ukraine and having Kyiv honor the Minsk agreement. But it's not sad, and it's not unfortunate. It's enraging. It deserves nothing but pure, unadulterated, white-hot rage that they did this. 2. Narrative managers have been working furiously to quash all discussion of item number one, however. Like our good friend Michael McFowl here. Please don't give Putin propagandists a platform on your media platforms. There is a time and a place for hearing two sides of an issue. This tragic moment in European history is not one of them. Do not give false equivalency to voices of evil and voices of good. This is one of the most influential Russia experts in the Western world decrying propaganda while demanding media outlets enact propaganda. Saying what your government once said instead of objective reporting of the truth is the thing that propaganda is. Please don't report facts on your media platforms. Don't let anyone talk about the known actions by NATO powers in Kyiv which experts have long warned would lead to this situation. You're not allowed to talk about the known U.S. and NATO and Ukraine actions which demonstrably led us to where we're at. You're only allowed to say Putin attacked Ukraine completely unprovoked, in a vacuum, solely because he is evil and hates freedom. Your loyalty is to the U.S. empire, not to truth. Whoever controls the narrative controls the world. 3. It's funny how everyone keeps referring to this as a World War II-style invasion instead of a U.S.-style invasion. It's not like examples of military invasions ended in the 1940s. Speaking of which, look at this other tweet by Eric Swalwell. Kiev and Kharkiv are being bombed. The largest invasion on our planet since World War II. <laughs> These people actually believe it's legitimate to call this the largest invasion on our planet since World War II. Just snip out all the pages from the history books between 1950 and 2003 to make Western imperialists feel good about themselves. Unbelievable. Number five. The primary risk of nuclear war is not that anyone will choose to start one, it's that one could be triggered by miscommunication, malfunctioning, or misunderstanding amid the chaos and confusion of escalating Cold War tensions. This nearly happened, repeatedly, in the last Cold War. Cold War brinkmanship has far too many small, unpredictable moving parts for anyone to feel confident that they can ramp up aggressions without triggering a nuclear exchange. Nobody who feels safe with any of these games of nuclear chicken understands what they really are. We survived the last Cold War by sheer dumb luck. We were never once in control. We just got lucky. There's no reason to trust that we'll get lucky again. We need to abandon this madness and pursue detente immediately. As Kyle Kolinsky put it, truly terrifying times. If Biden cuts off Russia from the global banking system in retaliation, which is very possible if not likely, Russia has stated that they consider this a declaration of war. People truly don't understand just how on the brink we are. 6. After the bombs drop and I'm dying of radiation poisoning, with my dying breath I'm going to thank Joe Biden for denying Putin the moral victory of an assurance that Ukraine won't join NATO. Probably goes with uh, number seven. Probably goes without saying, but just in case, anyone who supports any kind of Western military confrontation with Russia is an enemy of our entire species. 
eight. It would now seem the U.S. Power Alliance has a choice between either A, escalating aggressions against Russia to world-threatening levels, or B, doing what anti-imperialists have been begging them to do for years and pursuing detente. This is exactly where anti-imperialists have been warning we would wind up if the U.S. didn't work toward detente with Russia. While being called Kremlin agents and Putin lovers the entire time for years on end. All the people who've called us crazy over the years for warning that Cold War brinkmanship against Russia could lead to hot war are the same people calling on us to ramp up the brinkmanship now that our warnings proved true. Perhaps some serious reevaluation is in order. The solution to a crisis that was created by Cold War brinkmanship is not co- more Cold War brinkmanship. The solution to a crisis that was created by Cold War brinkmanship is detente. <clears throat> Nine. Assertions made by secretive government agencies based on classified intelligence should always be subjected to aggressively intense scrutiny 100% of the time, without exception and without apology, regardless of the fact that those assertions occasionally happen to prove true. 10. Unpopular opinion, but I think those who are crowing that this marks the dawn of a multipolar world may be jumping the gun a bit. If the U.S. empire can succeed in crippling Russia's economy and fomenting unrest, balkanization, and collapse there, and knocks out a key pillar of China's support system, and China is the ultimate target in all these unipolarist maneuverings. If it can do this, and that's a big if, at that point the empire can set to work on China with its guard bear not there to protect it. Which, of course, would have been the plan all along. Which, of course, would be why the Empire and its propaganda engine have been acting so weird these last few years. 11. Remain intensely skeptical of all news coming out of Ukraine. Since 2016, the Western Empire has been running an extremely aggressive narrative management campaign about Russia, the likes of which we've never seen before. The news media have been fully complicit in this mass-scale psyop. Watch and wait for hard evidence of every claim made. Recall how snipers were used during the 2014 coup in Kyiv to kill protesters and pin the blame of the ousted Yanukovych government. 12. It sure is a lucky coincidence that Westerners have spent the last few years being persuaded to hate Russia by their governments and media. Otherwise, the West's dramatic response to this act of aggression might be difficult to get them to consent to. <laughs>